there's been some uh, reports about an old malaria drug that a lot of people have gotten behind, but the, the test is not necessarily uh, acceptable. I know it wouldn't be acceptable to a great vaccine company like yours. Can you explain the difference between what you're doing with Kevzara versus the uh, anecdotal evidence that the old malaria drug might have some play here? Look, let's, let's take a step back, right? So you asked about the vaccine. We've got two vaccines in play for COVID-19, different mechanisms, one a more established mechanism and one a more experimental mechanism. I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure we have two shots on the It's important to get there as fast as possible in case, of course, there's a second wave. Then you've got the medicines that we're making every single day, the patients that need them just to continue in their chronic therapies in asthma, in other diseases. The two medicines that are in the middle there, Kevzara and Plaquenil, which is a malaria drug, these are where people in China and other places have said, we've seen some effect. We have tried them and we can see some efficacy. Now, what we need to do is working with the WHO and the regulators is actually quantify that effect and quantify the actual patient profile that will respond best. We don't want patients struggling. We know that if repurposed medicines can be put to the task to do something incredible, then so be it. So we're just playing our part, making sure they're available for the investigators, making sure the regulators have everything they need. But it does seem that uh, the, your acute drug that you just described, the acute vaccine, it seems like that if we're really lucky, uh, it can both take care of people who already have the virus in them and actually stop the virus coming in because of a very, uh, let's a brilliant way. It's a brilliant way to be able to head off the virus's uh, most insidious mechanisms. Yeah, you know, I think you know, ordinarily it takes 10 years to invent a vaccine. The main reason is because you're going to give it to a lot of healthy people on a massive scale. So you have to be sure and you have to be right. These are, of course, unprecedented times. So we're experts in this and we're moving as fast as we can. And the science is going to tell us whether we can be in patients that need vaccination, patients that will be protected, or even patients that may respond uh, who already have the illness. But we need a bit of time. And we're going, literally, I said, we've got everybody in the entire organization working 24-7, bringing their volunteer spirit to make sure we can do something with these vaccines. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.